Hello folks, this is Steve ab 4 l This is a little bit of reminiscing. I was on my other computer just logging on and you know they show you a selection of videos you might be interested in and I clicked on one, I'm not subscribed to him and we didn't get 10 seconds into it and I knew I was going to make an episode. So just to give credit now, I'm on my regular recording machine. Windows open, you may hear traffic. This has to do with traffic. It's called, uh, by chance, it was a video, the break, the late break show. And as far as I can tell from his accent, he's a Brit. It doesn't sound Aussie to me. And there's, there it is, eight hours ago, he posted this one. The brand new Citrion 2CVAK electric delivery van. Exclusive first drive review. It's already got 44,000 views on it. Now, why did that catch my eye? Because he said it's a brand new and I'm looking at it. I said, I know that one. So when you get into it a little bit, he's showing you the brand new version. Now look at the details. Look at, look at, this is, this is the new electric one. But he started the first segment loading some jugs into this one. Now, he's clearly a collector because if you watch his movie, you see he's got some other older cars, but I'm talking about this one, this one right here. I rode in one. That's what I'm going to tell you about. 1966, Algeria. Now, this is a Citrion. 2CV, see you do a Google search, Citrion, 2CV, Wikipedia knows what it is. Note C-I-T-R-O, and then I'm going to say with the umlaut over it. Of course, that's Deutsch, German. I'm, I took three years of French and I can't remember what the French word is for, but it means, and we used to do it in English, like, you know that Christmas is Noel. And when I was a kid, N-O-E with a double dot over it, L, was the way it was spelled. We've dropped all of that. And it stands for, oh, I'm learning, <clears throat> Citrion 2CV, French, du, du, two, chevaux, horses, vapeur, vapor horses, which would mean what, a gasoline engine? Oh, two steam horse powers, meaning two taxable horse powers is an economy car produced by the French company Citrion, this is the first time reading it, from 1948 until 1990. Now remember, we're talking, for me, we're talking about 1966. So I'm not making up something when I say I've been in one. In Algeria. I've seen lots of those. You'd see them on the road. There are different body styles. Two-door panel truck, two-door pickup. Now, 
There it is. Early AZF four gunnet rear. Early two CV sedans has canvas. Oh, that's talking to the one above. And you can tell that was translated by somebody who wasn't native English. <clears throat> Despite critics, Citrion was flooded with customer orders at the show. The car had great impact on the lives of low income segment of the population in France. The 2CV was a commercial success within months of it going on sale. There was a three year waiting list. This is the first time I'm reading this. Which soon increased to five years. You had to wait that long? At the time, a second half 2CV. Now they're talking about sedans and these two was more expensive than a new one because the buyers did not have to wait. Used ones went for more money. I could get it right now. Production was increased from 876 units in 1949 to 6,196 units in 1950. It's kind of give you a feeling for post-war France recovering from the Second World War in the face of growing Colonial opposition from where? Oh, among other places, Algeria. Oh, didn't I mention Algeria? So they were talking about the sedans. I've actually worked on one of these in my brother's foreign car repair shop. So in 1949, the first delivered 2CV Type A was a 375cc model airplane engine. That's about the size of the original Hondas, where they used their motorcycle engines and put them in something like this as the first Honda cars that they were brought to the United States. And I remember seeing them on Mainline Drive when I lived in the Philadelphia area in the early 1960s. We're talking about the same era. So the French and the Japanese, which were recovering from the war, taking about the same kind of approach. It was good for as much as 40 miles per hour with only one taillight and a windscreen wiper with shaft speed drive was driven from the engine, not an electric motor. The wiper speed was dependent on driving speed. See, I just said it. There was no fuel gauge. Citrion provided a dipstick below the petrol filler cap. I want to give you a feeling for what these were like at the beginning. And we're going to, that's 1949 to 1959. So do you think when I got into one of these in Algeria, I was tramping, hitchhiking, and one of these stopped? And it wasn't new. And it was left over from the French army. Because the French had had enough referendum under de Gaulle two years earlier, approximately 1964. What were the three choices? Continue with Algerian colonial status. Independence. Become a part of metropolitan France. What do you think the Algerians chose? Independence. They kept trying to assassinate de Gaulle. Go read it. They, the army. So, <clears throat> I'm in Algeria in 1966. It's an independent country. I'm on the roadside. And one of these stops. I have a rucksack. It's two soldiers. Algerian army. One's an officer, he's driving it. And the other is an enlisted man. I think he had two stripes. He was sitting in the passenger seat. He was older than the officer. The officer looked like a recent college grad. And he wasn't a Pied Noir. He wasn't a French born in Algeria. He was Arab. 
So they agree to take me, and the corporal, or whatever he was, opens the back, and he lets me sit inside, in the back. And there's a glass viewport, but it isn't openable. And the temperatures are about 90 degrees. And we begin. And I don't remember how far we drove, let's say for an hour. I'm in the back, they're in the front, they don't talk too much. The officer driver's got problems with other vehicles. He's honking the horn at a lot of them, and he's writing down license plate numbers as they're driving. And I can see the corporal, who's probably at least 10 years older than him, is very nervous with the behavior of the officer. And he was an officer. He had on here. So we go for, let's say it was an hour or whatever it was. I don't know where we are other than we're down the highway, west to east. And then it pulls over and stops and parks on the side of the road. And I hear the two guys, I can see them. They get, open their doors, get out, close them, and just go somewhere. And they leave me in the back. So I thought they just got out to take a piss or something. It's starting to get a hut in there, five minutes, almost 10 minutes. I start banging on the shell. I can't get out. It's locked. And the corporal shows up. He opens it and he just, he doesn't speak any English. And I did, I had the feeling he didn't speak any French either. So that means he was from a village originally. The officer I know could speak French because he, sp he spoke with me a little bit. My French. So he closes the door and he motions, come with me. And we go up a long driveway. It's out in the country. It's a small peasant house. They're sitting under the shade of a tree. Not much different than around here. <clears throat> the officer, an older gentleman, and a very, I'll admit it, very beautiful young lady, maybe 19, 20 years old, and the corporal, and now me. They have a glass vase of tea, iced tea, and they offer me a drink, and then they continue the conversation, and it's clear that it's the officer speaking to the father of her, and he's courting her. So this goes on for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. <clears throat> now, I want to put this all at one spot. <clears throat> While we were driving, I told you that the officer was doing all kinds of things, writing things down. And there was a satchel, business satchel with a handle. You don't see him now. It's like you carried legal papers in if you were a lawyer going to court. And it was between the two seats. <clears throat> and I noticed he kept putting his hand on it. The officer. When they got out of the vehicle, he took it with him. So I came now, they allow me to sit there, I'm watching what's going on, and he's got the satchel next to him. Oh no, in front of him, excuse me. Now, the father of the girl is sitting four feet away, facing him. And it's about 10 minutes of conversation with me present. And then I don't know exactly what they're saying because they're speaking Arabic. And the old man, the father of the gal he's courting reaches forward, looking at him, asking clearly it was, what's in here? And he picks the satchel up, very innocent. 
He leans forward, asking him something about what's in here, and he picks it up. All he did was pick it up. He didn't get up from his seat or anything. And the officer pulls out his gun, cocks it, and puts it right in his face. Right here. You see why I'm telling you about this? And the old man was like, oh, oh, oh. and he's, and with a gun to his forehead, he's saying, put it down. And he's saying it in Arabic, but it was pretty obvious when he's doing this. And that kind of killed the mood. A minute later, we were all getting up from our chairs and leaving. I'm telling you something about the mentality of Algerians in 1966. Pardon me. Algerian, just out of college, whatever he is, upper class Algerian, he's an officer in the army, he's a big deal. You just get what I'm saying? He's on some important mission as a courier carrying secret military papers from one army camp to another. Use your imagination from what I told you. I'm talking about what was in front of me. I'm not talking about, I saw that in the movies. I read that in a book. I'm talking about my personal experience. When he whipped that gun out, it was like a fast draw in a Western. I'm not kidding. The corporal was visibly shaken. We went back to this thing. The corporal opened the back. I got in. And we drove maybe as much as a kilometer or two. And they knew I was continuing on. And it was a branch. And the branch to the left was to go into town and presumably the army camp. And they dropped me off there, and I was happy to get out of the truck. So when I saw this promoted to me, and I clicked on it, that's not what it started with. It started with that, and that was deja vu right there. Instantly, I remembered what happened that day in 1966 in Algeria. My ride with two guys in the army. The hotshot with the secret papers in the satchel and a fast draw gun. Steve A. B. Foyo, just reminiscing a little bit. Saying, see you in 73.